This week in comic books, we get Peacemaker Tries Hard, and it's still the saddest comic book out there. I'm going to tell you why. In Marvel, we get Fantastic Four number eight, and it's still the smartest comic book with flakes of nostalgia. I'm going to break that down for you. And in Hell We Fight is the most unique comic book I read this week. That and a few other comic books, but let me show you something about the Comic Book Community Awards real quick. Have you voted yet? Check this out. Huh. Huh. Welcome to Forever Man. Let's go. All right, you wonderful weirdos, it's another week. That means more comic books. So let's jump right into this and break it down for you. We're going to start off with uh, Joker Uncovered, number one. I went with the shiny variant for it. First off, kudos. That's just creepy right there. But all this is is just cover issues um, from over the past few years going into it. They have a little section with punchline in it. Not really much to talk about here. It's mostly about artwork, so we're just going to go ahead and pass on this. Cool, right? But not really something I can review. Next, Peacemaker uh, tries hard, so he really does in this one. In this one, the brain and his sidekick, Gorilla, um, kind of are blackmailing him. And the, 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 the value of the blackmail would be his dog that he recently found that he decided to name Bruce Wayne. So he works with the gorilla to go steal something, a MacGuffin, to help the brain get a new body. While all that's going on, it turns out that they're just backstabbing him and going to keep the dog. But while this was going on, he kind of befriended this gorilla. This is kind of Peacemaker's thing. He just wants a friend, really, and he doesn't know how to associate and communicate well with people. At least not in any meaningful way, in this kind of shallow way. And then, of course, he gets backstabbed, and, and that's just, it's its sad to see this happen. I, it's not sad like, boo -hoo, I'm going to cry, but like, oh, man, you just can't catch a break, can you, Slick? So, yeah, that happens in here. Uh, moving on to DC, we get uh, Dark Knights of Steel. I've been reading this. For the most part, I've been enjoying most of it. I think I just got it out of habit at this point. In this one, we kind of take things a little far. There's another epic twist in here where Amanda Waller, or General Waller, the Knights Guard, if you will, she's kind of actually been working with the White Martians in this. Uh, a little too much. Also, the House of L, their ship that crashed, What's left of the elves decided to go ahead and make a phantom projector, you know, to kind of send them away because that's a comic book trope that gets used a lot. Um, I don't know if I care, but we got one more issue, so we might as well go ahead and finish it off. That's kind of where I'm at with that. All right, moving into Marvel. That's all the DCs I picked up. We got Star Wars Empire. So you want to talk about a comic book that didn't need to be written. Um, this is... A random company that works for the Empire. The Empire ends up taking complete control of it. The son of the company has to go and work on some data logging, something or other. Accidentally access a file that's kind of talking about the Death Star coming back. You remember that from the movie. There's your nostalgia pill. And then while all this is going on, they realize he accidentally did this when he was just trying to, you know be better at his job work harder at his job than he needed to while he's awkwardly trying to make friends which doesn't work out very well for him either we don't need the backstory of every single possible maybe character in star war lore like i'm just saying like this didn't need to happen the, the, they showed you an ewok because nostalgia pills you got the death star nostalgia pills the rest of it's just pretty much just generic storytelling for the most part. I'm not going to say it was bad, but I'm just going to say it was unnecessary. I think that's fair. Next, we get Loki. So Loki is doing something kind of unique in here, but at the same time repeating itself as well. So in this, we first we break off with some... Um, kind of viking lore about why they would cut their fingernails and it was so loki wouldn't steal them and make this boat which eventually brought on ragnarok right this boat it's weird out of all viking lore and all of just lore throughout various cultures vikings had kind of the weirdest one about things 
So this fingernail boat, right, apparently really exists. It's more than just a lore thing, of course, right? Because that's what we do. <laughs> and it's uh, hijacked by two frost giants that uh, are tired of Loki being in charge type of thing. So they kind of float it, crash it into the world tree, and this obviously causes a problem. they got to get the boat back to squared away, yada, 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 right? It's interesting. Every story doesn't need to be about Ragnarok. Like, have you noticed that about Thor books and Loki books? It's always Ragnarok. Okay, fine, so be it. It is an interesting take on it, and it is kind of, like, interesting how they'll pick these weird aspects about Viking lore and kind of just throw it into a comic book story. I like that aspect of it. And Loki is genuinely kind of the laid-back, take-care-of-things-as-they-come sort of character. But in this one, too, he actually shows some concern where he wants the Giants to learn how to read, and that's how they obviously found out about the fingernail boat. Hashtag fingernail boat. Let's go on. Next, we get uh, Deadpool, Batter, and Blood. So this is Rob Liefeld, and it's everything you expect from a 90s comic book. Um, you know, there's bad feet drawing. Say what you will. Who's staring at feet anyway? But uh, it, it's classic 90s. You know, you get Cable, you get Wolverine, you get a, a big fight, lots of gore, some whimsical sayings in it. Um, but really you can't really review it because it's just like any other one that ever pops off at the end of the day if you like that 90s style art if you're a rob liefeld fan and if you, if you like um scotty young covers boom this book's a home run for you but for the most part it just seemed again kind of a, a redundant story for me a lot of redundancies this week i noticed that all right moving on something that pick of the week top of the line ready to go i'm on board with this so far it's been great fantastic four number eight um in this one we talk about um geometric shapes right kind of show you some geometric shape that actually exists that people study and there's tons of theories about it also in this one we get this kind of monster character and it kind of reminded me of silver age comics where you know like everyone would introduce a new monster into it and the way that monster generally gets introduced kind of did that in here too uh basically brainwashes everybody first it convinces you to work for it and then the moment that it has you under control like everybody else forgets you exist right and they kind of even played off the mandela effect a little bit in here too which was funny i liked how they kind of threw the woo woo in there with everything else i thought that was good but still still the best read for me so far as we're going through uh just great stuff in it definitely check it out and don't be scared to look up a few words or ask somebody what something means because dang nabbit that's how we learn last it's a short week this week i should have warned you that at the beginning not as much fun but we're gonna get through it uh and hell we fight so this is the most unique story i read this week it's, it's basically four kids in hell right teenagers and uh, the, the reasons why they're in hell are kind of sad like i don't think any religious practice actually puts people in hell for killing frogs but there he is anyway um and basically what the kids do is that there's an ice cream truck that's traveling through hell again told you it's unique and they decide that they're going to hijack this truck because who doesn't like ice cream come to find out they're really the demons that are driving this particular ice cream truck are smuggling an angel right I love the interaction in this. I love the quirkiness of it. The characters all have their own voice. Um, I think it's truly unique. And I, if my comic book store has it, I'll be chasing. Uh, in hell we fight. It, this is fun. You get a little bit of an origin story why some of these characters are in hell. More to come, I'm sure. Uh, one of them is actually the son of a major demon there. So, you know, he's like born there. But for the most part, that was really fun. And it was great so that's that's it that's my comic call and review this week got a short one for you uh definitely be sure to check the links out down below i sell coffee and i have evil layer merch with some cool cool sweet sweet gear i got you covered plus i got you some villain juice down there too to keep you moving uh also i'm going to heroes con right i'll be showing up that's the 16th through the 18th a bunch of us youtubers are going to be down there love to meet you love to hang out with you be walking around the floor 
Definitely, and I'm bringing patches with me. I'm bringing Evil Layer patches. I forgot to mention that in my last few videos. But yeah, we got some more Evil Layer patches to hand out at a Comic Con. So definitely let me know if you want one. And don't forget to comment, subscribe, ring the bell, hit a thumbs up, do something to let me know that you're watching this. That would be greatly appreciated. So I'm going to go ahead and head out, guys. That's it for this one. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.